Good morning. Um, it was about 11 years ago, um, one very, very cold morning in January 1999, um, I came to Davis and um, I met Dr. Tom Nesbitt and said, wouldn't it be great to um, think about doing things together between healthcare and uh, information technology? And he was already very much into uh, telemedicine and so on. We talked about a lot of exciting things, and that was more than 11 years ago. Uh, just two weeks ago, I attended the um, CTN kickoff meeting, participated by the Governor Schwarzenegger and the White House representative. It was a really exciting moment, and now uh, with Citrus almost uh, 10 years old, with, I guess it's about nine years old now, and uh, healthcare IT has grown to be uh, such an exciting arena and uh, participated by people in hardware, software, um, healthcare practitioners, networking, and everything. So I think it's a really exciting opportunity. As you know, Citrus is um, a societal application pull uh, technology push. It's not just uh, information technology, but information technology that matters to the society. And healthcare being such a big part of our uh, society, it's of course extremely important. So um, Dr. David Harry has uh, really um, opened up the discussion in a way that I can easily follow up. Today's um, healthcare is very much bandwidth limited. Uh, less than 80% have, 80% uh, of people don't have the um, broadband access and so on. And what we like to do is to have Citrus being a key part of that um, innovation going from today's network, today's healthcare, while serving the um, community, also pull the community into kind of future generation healthcare where information technology is abundant. There are constraints about where the fibers are, what kind of wireless network is available, as Dr. Harry has mentioned. Uh, what we like to envision is that um, we can provide sufficient and abundant and affordable healthcare by having sensor networks and visualization, um, maybe robotic surgery, a um, lot of experts on the network together in a cloud computing type of area. Even if your doctors are so far away, you can provide um, uh, networked um, healthcare services. Your network may not be very level, network may be bandwidth limited. We like to provide as good a healthcare as possible. Now, um, Citrus infrastructure is an infrastructure of people, ideas, and uh, information technology with society, uh, societal aspect of public policy, all these uh, ideas covering extremely broad uh, disciplines. What I'd like to cover is kind of first talk about Citrus networking and computing, um, talked about application hour networking, we like to have this uh, uh, networking and computing to be available in, on a ubiquitous manner. And the networking will be kind of heterogeneous networking, with sensors, wireless, wireline, and optical networks. And the network will provide you with an opportunity to create test beds of, uh, a test bed of many test beds. We have multiple campuses. We have a partnership between uh, academia, industry, and government agencies. And then next, we talked about society information system. Uh, Jim Demo, when we started off Citrus, uh, he wrote a very excellent proposal, um, NSF, uh, Information Technology Research Proposal. And there he emphasized society information system quite a bit and a successful proposal. We like to apply that to healthcare and create society information system of visualization, networking, data mining, and supporting security and social issues and so on. And then I'm going to kind of summarize my talk by just kind of showing some available Citrus technologies, just kind of <laughs> interfacing with our practitioners in the medical area to kind of bring, bring down the uh, gap to be kind of small, narrow down the gap and have intimate uh, activities between the IT research and healthcare. So as uh, Dr. Harry mentioned, all our services now are using internet protocol. We used to use voice over telephone network. We used to watch video on a cable and so on. But now everything's packetized. All the web services and uh, video and voice, everything 
is becoming on the uh, Internet Protocol. So the Internet Protocol is very powerful because it can support any applications, but applications require different uh, quality of service, type of service, and class of service. At the same time, the Internet can sit on any type of uh, physical platform, wireless, wireline, and optical, and so on. And for that reason, voice over IP and a video IP type of stuff very popular. However, it can fail often, as uh, Dr. Harry mentioned, providing quality of service is a challenge. And the future internet will have even more challenges due to security attacks and um, diverse physical uh, layers, and actually quite a bit of demands from the uh, customers. One such application is um, telesurgery. Um, as mentioned before, you require so much bandwidth as this um, telesurgery becomes more uh, three-dimensional and so on, the, the capacity can actually approach up to like a per second. You have 1,000 by 1,000 by 1,000 pixels, 28 frames per second, 30 bits of color, and so on. That's basically a terabit service. And at the same time, you want to have this with a very high quality of service, meaning that the, uh, you want to have very little latency and uh, uh, high degrees of availability. Uh, at um, Berkeley, Davis, um, Santa Cruz, and Merced, we have very good visualization activities. And um, Luzna, who is sitting in the audience, um, has recently shown this art, artistic uh, visualization. And we have uh, tele immersed visualization going on at the same time. Having these type of activities available um, collaboratively allows us to help a patient solve the um, healthcare problems by uh, participated by the um, number of medical doctors together. So body sensor networks, um, kind of looking at your vital signs going from um, blood pressure and uh, ECG, all these uh, sensor, kind of body sensor network can, can be interfaced to um, your cell phone. And, and then depending on your um, emergency, you can actually have emergency to like ambulance come out and um, you can have patients actually monitored by um, uh, practitioners all the time. And having this to be available online all the time um, is a big challenge. At uh, Citrus, what we like to do is to kind of look into um, our talents going from sensor networks, wireless network, and all these uh, information technologies together and to create a um, societal information system. And for instance, this kind of um, um, creating sensor network for the human body, body sensor network, and having that uh, sensor network data to be analyzed on databases, data mine them, and then kind of model the um, health conditions. In this case, we can actually even model DNAs. And then you do a computational analysis, visualize them, and then provide some kind of feedback. You can detect any illnesses or prevent or provide appropriate responses and recover from illnesses. So looking at this whole kind of say, society information system applied to healthcare, you can immediately tell that the uh, quality of service is important. And also, the uh, depending on this route, you have certain the real time application, and uh, you have uh, security issues, and so on. So as I mentioned earlier, putting a tag on a packet and providing some application awareness on, the, um, uh, on these uh, packet services is fairly important. By the way, this uh, type of, um, say, information system is applicable to disaster recovery, environment monitoring, uh, energy, it basically having sensor network with modeling and analysis with uh, visualization can be applicable. So what Citrus can provide is an information system infrastructure that can be applied to healthcare, but at the same time, the same kind of system can be also applied to environment and uh, energy and other vital services. One challenge is, though, um, when we look at the healthcare IT, it's so important, but you have a choice of either setting up healthcare-only network, the dedicated healthcare network, or share the network with uh, everybody else. And of course, if you share the network with everybody else, you actually can save money and you can be more ubiquitous because you don't have to have another network. You have to look for each network type of stuff. Um, the defense network is also going that way. There's a defense network called DRAN, and there's a gig network. They're also looking into having a private network on virtually on the um, shared internet. 
then again, assuring the quality of service and uh, having security and um, providing guaranteed services is a very big uh, challenge, especially when you have huge amount of traffic increase due to peer-to-peer -peer services and video and gaming and so on. In fact, I have a teenager at home who jumps around and play video game all the time and they collaborate. And uh, Facebook and so on, these are, and the BitTorrent, these are actually occupying quite a bit of uh, packet uh, capacity. So then having a guaranteed um, uh, healthcare network services is a challenge as well. So looking at the um, network um, infrastructure, um, Luzna actually remembers that when we first set up the um, uh, Citrus proposal, we had Citrus networking to be one of the key infrastructure for connecting four campuses and looking at application and the technologies together. And here um, we look at, say, healthcare networking, uh, healthcare services between the four campuses, including wireless and so on. But at the same time, we support other applications like smart classroom and um, environment monitoring and so on. So we're looking at the, uh, the testbed ideas that would um, go ahead and link these uh, society information systems and set up a multi-campus um, cyber infrastructure for supporting healthcare, but at the same time we can look into uh, supporting other applications as well. Um, even though this figure is kind of old, it's about nine years old now, but the, the network is actually coming up very much together. Uh, Santa Cruz did not have fiber until uh, quite recently. Now they have fiber services. And um, between Davis and Sacramento, 10 years ago, we had set up this committee to look into fibers. Now there is uh, eight strands of fiber between Davis and Sacramento. So we can actually go ahead and look into this uh, four campus. In fact, going down to Santa Cruz and San Diego, uh, San Diego and other campuses and look into a research network that can uh, set up to be a future test bed for the uh, CTN, future CTN. So the CTN network, uh, as pointed out earlier, it connects about 800 nodes, and uh, there are a lot of areas that have no um, um, connectivity beyond one minute per second. It's a big challenge. So the, the test bed activities we're looking at is, first of all, with uh, application awareness for healthcare. We're going to have sensor, wireless, wireline, wireline optical networking, um, especially mapping application space of healthcare networking in three categories, type of service, quality of service, class of service. And basically type of service is whether it's going to be a real time or non-real time, time sensitive application. For instance, interactive visualization require a high degree of type of service in terms of real time, whereas the, just a video streaming will not require such high degree of type of service. Quality of service is basically negotiated and guaranteed you basically make a promise and have uh, availability to be better than 99.999%. And the class of service has no guarantee, but there's statistically provide a priority. You have higher priority, packet, and low priority. This is all done by label or packet, packet tag. So we use the label-based um, um, network. It's basically based on the packet. Uh, depending on which type of service, quality service, class service you apply, you basically attach uh, different degrees of label, and in MPLS you have six degrees of quality service. We can use that, and we're going to use that uh, as a platform. C CTN is already using MPLS, and now MPLS is available in wireless, optical, wireline, and it's going to be a extremely useful platform, especially because uh, CTN is using that. But at the same time, um, there is an open flow um, uh, activity that provides these um, new generation of networking codes in the open source. So you can actually have students to, or our researchers to participate and write the code for monitoring the network and then step by step build up the open flow activities is actually propagating to all these uh, network providers as well. So by doing this activity, we're gonna help uh, design future healthcare network. Uh, Steve has mentioned uh, future CTN node and basically this will be a uh, frontier activities to promote and help the uh, future healthcare network by allowing, uh, by providing um, testbed to practitioners as well as researchers and also the industry partner and incubating space and so on. This would be an extremely exciting opportunity. So let me just kind of shift gears and look into what, what type of um, uh, technologies in 
terms of hardware or software will be going in there. Uh, John, John gave a talk, plenary talk today regarding this uh, electronic um, healthcare record. From, from, from the past to future, we're gonna try to put all the data on electronics. It's gonna be kind of cloud computing, virtual data, no data on the paper, type paperless type of architecture. So then one question for Citrus is because Citrus has a lot of societal uh, researchers as well. Are you, are you really ready to get butt naked and have your data available anywhere in the network? Now you really have to have, say, MPLS type of network to secure the um, connectivity and with that VPN guaranteed and so on, so that you can have uh, privacy in the network and so on. As, as mentioned earlier, the public policy and societal issues are extremely important and that determines the price and everything. Uh, right now, um, United States, as you know, is spending 16% of GDP towards uh, healthcare. That's two, ter uh, two trillion dollars per year. And as mentioned earlier, it's gonna be even worse as the elderly people grow older and there'll be more uh, older people in our society. So then how do we care take care of elder care? Socioeconomics, you know, there are a lot of poor people, not overseas, but just around the Sacramento and the Bay Area, we have a lot of poor people and the state has uh, privacy and security and what kind of public policy we're gonna attend. There's a lot of, so Citrus actually has, as, as, as I'm trying to um, mention this to our healthcare colleagues, that there are a lot of uh, people in Citrus that can help these issues and work together as uh, societal research together with the healthcare research to solve these issues. We'd like to have this type of healthcare uh, uh, tools available to everybody on a ubiquitous basis. And one of the big invention that is hi uh, highlighted is a um, cell phone that can work like a um, uh, microscope, so a cell scope uh, by Professor Fletcher and so on. This is a big, um, one of the best uh, what's new for 2008 and so on. And, um, uh, Ken Goldberg is in the room today. Uh, he's going to perhaps talk about the smart needle that can be steered. And uh, Raj Amatharaja is going to probably talk about perhaps um, uh, electrical circuit that does not require batteries. So something that can kind of steal the energy from the environment. So you can actually think about the uh, wearable or attachable smart uh, circuit that you don't have to worry about the battery, you know, maybe even your heart pacer does not have to use a battery. And then Professor Tim Lui Pan, I don't know if he's here yet, uh, he has lab on chip. You can have a spectrometer like that can measure glucose or sugar level in your bloodstream. You can do all kinds of measurement on a single chip and by combining uh, Tim Lui Pan's work with uh, Professor Raj Amarasar's work, we can now have a lab on chip without a battery. So this is kind of the role of Citrus where we match make people in different disciplines and create something new in terms of uh, uh, cyber infrastructure or the healthcare infrastructure for Citrus. One of the great challenges is uh, having PET, uh, positron emission uh, 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 imaging and the MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, to be available on a handheld type of basis. This is still a big challenge. There's a lot of research going on and perhaps someday this can become available even on a battery based or without battery based. There's a lot of uh, data mining and uh, software imaging technology that allows you to take the image to kind of abstract it and have some kind of features uh, found on the brain. And in fact, you, you, have, you also know that uh, now Google search is available in images. Perhaps you can start to do a Google image of certain pattern that you imaged and then apply and then perhaps you can find some disease from the, the real-time measurement of your data. Autism and video games, I don't know if uh, Greg Niemeyer is in the room. Uh, there's a lot of activities going on between Mind Institute at East Davis Medical Center and uh, software engineers or software researchers like uh, Greg doing the uh, autism studies. In fact, it turns out that um, the, um, this is work by uh, San Diego people, and I've been looking into this, if you look at the brain waves of mammals, when the mammals like say these are rats and um, you know, the dolphins and so on, when they're under stress, they have certain patterns and then when they're happy, they have certain other patterns. What's interesting is that you only require two equations 
two linear differential equations and uh, I'm sorry, it's nonlinear, two linear, uh, nonlinear differential equations and four parameters to match the pattern almost perfectly. So then if you extract these four parameters and data mine them, perhaps you can make some correlation between what's going on and uh, what's shown up so they can actually start to um, perhaps help, help uh, patients come out from autism and so on. So you can actually do this testing in real time, playing video game, and allow kids to play video game and help the patients and so on. Myself, I've been working on um, data center on a chip and uh, high speed router on a chip uh, with uh, Raj and a number of other faculty members. And basically the idea is to reduce the size and power by about a factor of 1,000 and 10,000 by using very new technology to allow these uh, huge data centers that are available in Google Center, not, not at Google anymore, maybe you can wear them and you can actually have patients to be um, solved very quickly and so on. Um, RFID, by having RFID you can have a passive wearable um, tag, you can go into, so you can have a bunch of babies that look the same but then they have IDs that look different and then you can have um, your RFID to be interfaced to your smart home and when you walk into a smart, this is a view graph by uh, Stefano Carpin. When you walk into the home, um, the house recognizes you, or your building or your office recognizes you, and will take care of the air conditioning and so on. You may actually think that this is a big problem for the privacy. I don't want to be known that I'm here, but for the elder people who may collapse, they may actually like to be known, and uh, they want to have the doctors know that you're at certain rooms doing what, and uh, sleeping or whatever. As mentioned earlier, the uh, connectivity is a big problem. Um, this uh, work by Dr. Brewer, the wild network uses 8 to the 11 technology to have connectivity out to like hundreds of kilometers. This was tested in Africa, and you can provide 1.5 uh, megabit per second type of capacity with um, uh, 8 to the 11. Myself, I've been trying to use similar technology, but on a um, higher bandwidth at uh, 10 gig per second so that within the ambulance you can actually provide multi-site uh, visualization. So at the first minute you collapse, or somebody collapses, not you, uh, the first minute is very critically important so the doctors can actually provide very high-end services including visualize it at the, uh, maybe even uh, telesurgery through this type of um, um, wireless services with uh, 10G and so on. So with that, I just want to kind of conclude that the um, Citrus has been a great opportunity for linking healthcare practitioners and uh, researchers in the IT area. And we'd like to um, promote that as much as we can. I, um, I'm very excited about um, being part of this, continue to be part of this, and please let me know if there's anything I can do to help. I hope uh, these type of activities will uh, help you link between the healthcare area and the IT area. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.